Today we're going to look at a page and a half scene from the script Night of the Miasma by Alexander Howell. We're going to read through it, see what we like about it, see what's working, what's not working, and then we're going to do our best to revise it and improve it. Okay. Interior Saints University Lecture Room 104, Day. Students write on their tests. A few start to sit up and submit their test to Professor Myers, who is sitting at his desk. All the students leave except John. Myers looks at the clock, then says, three minutes till the end of class. John hastily finishes and gets up to give Myers his test. Here you go, Mr. Myers, all finished. But is it all correct? Let's take a look. Myers grades over John's paper. John rolls his eyes and sighs. You studied, didn't you? Like my life depended on it. Well, then you're in a dire situation, sir, because this test is inadequate. Come on, Myers, just let me pass so we don't ever have to see each other again. I have to follow the rules, John, and put this in without any changes. Well, I hope you like seeing me next semester fucking around like before. I like the times where you fail miserably. I'll be looking forward to that next semester. John pushes all the items off of Myers' desk and walks away, just before he leaves. Hold on, John. What do you want? How about we make a deal? I'll give you extra credit if you help me with the project tonight. And it will be enough for me to pass? Yes, first thing you do is sign this. Myers walks over to John to give him a paper. John sees it's a confidential paper. John is nervous. Fuck it, I'll sign that. What time and place do we meet? Myers writes down on a piece of paper and hands it to John. Here, I wrote it down just in case you forget. See you then. John leaves and walks down the hallway. Okay, so... I think there's a lot we can improve on this scene, but I think there's some good things that we want to keep. So I like the dynamic, the power dynamic of a student who's not doing well in the class, who needs help, and a professor who also needs help with something confidential, something secretive, and is going to enlist this student to help him. I think what we can improve on is the dialogue. It's spelling out kind of exactly what's happening we're not leaving much room for things to be discovered and the scene description is also just it's telling us exactly what's happening but it's not giving us a clear visual in our mind we want we want everything in the scene description to evoke a clear image basically we want to have it read in a way that we're able to just watch the movie in our head one thing I think we can improve on right off the bat is I think we can demonstrate that John is not doing well before anybody speaks. Let's revise this scene description in a way that we can clearly picture the film and also set up the dynamics silently of John doing poorly. To start, I'm just going to delete this and we're going to start with an image. So how about leaning against a desk with a close eye on his wristwatch is an older academic. So let's start with what Professor Myers looks like. He has the posture of someone who's spent their entire career living inside their head with a bad haircut and a moth-eaten sweater to boot. Okay, so this kind of gives us a very clear image of what this guy looks like. We've, all, we've probably all had professors like this who aren't very present in their body but are live as intellectuals, then we'll name him. This is Professor Myers, late 60s. And how do we set up John not doing well? So let's paint the picture. Before him is a large lecture hall packed with students uh, in the midst of an exam. Uh, and let's give a better image. Heads down, scribbling, concentrated. Okay. 
Now we're going to set up John Myers from Myers perspective. Myers scans the room, notices. So if we're going to not use dialogue, so to set up John doing poorly silently, uh, what if he was kind of looking off into space? So maybe he's the only scans the room, notices a lone student seated in the back, staring off into infinity, looking hopeless. So we just really spell it out. Uh, and now let's introduce him. This is John. And let's have this couple be an odd pair. So John, what is John? He's a knuckle dragger with shaggy brown hair and a boyish face that does not match his hulking build. Okay, so now hopefully We've set up the dynamics and no one's spoken yet. And this allows our audience to piece the puzzle together on their own, which is a satisfying experience in storytelling. You wanna you wanna just give I think there's some Pixar saying where you kind of you tell the audience two plus two and let them say four. So that's what we're trying to do here. We already had him looking at his watch, so Myers, let's have him watch John for a moment. Myers watches John for a moment checks his watch, then checks his watch. And we'll just have him say time. So we've established this is a large lecture hall, everyone's hard at work, so the silence breaks as hundreds of pencils hit paper and students stand up hand in their exams and file out the door. Okay, and I think we can drill more into how poorly John's done. He's not, you know, John hastily finishes and gets up to give Myers his test. This almost sounds kind of peppy. Um, so how about still seated John lets the other students clear out before he reluctantly gets to his feet, mopes over to Meyer's desk, and tosses his exam onto the pile. Okay, now I don't think if someone was doing really poorly and knew it, um, I don't know if they'd say, they'd just say, I'll finish. It sounds like he's happy to be finished. It's also, we don't need to say, here you go, Mr. Myers, because we're seeing him hand in his test, so we can get rid of that. Uh, but maybe he can't admit that he knows he did poorly. So I am fucked. But is it all correct? Let's take a look. Again, I think we can cut this dialogue and just see what's happening. So Myers grades over John. So we'll have him pull the paper first. Myers pulls John's test from the pile and begins flipping through it, scanning the pages. Okay, I like this next line. You studied, didn't you? Um, but maybe we'll just shorten it. You studied? That kind of puts it on John. Makes it a little less accusatory. What if we updated this so we kind of feel for John more? Um, you know what? For once, I really did. And then we can have him insult himself. Stupid. Well, you, well, then you are in a dire situation, sir, because this test is inadequate. Uh, let's have him. Let's have Myers be less accusatory and more. What if he just said, "You left a lot of these blank," 
and John would say, I know. Okay, so now everyone's on the same page. This kid did not do well on his test. Myers nods in solidarity. So now we have John appeal to Myers. Um, this doesn't sound like college. We don't ever have to see each other again. Um, so what if John just appealed to Myers and didn't bargain with him because he's such a poor student? So he said, hey, if there's some way I could walk out of here with a C, it would be a game changer for me. Uh, again, that's kind of a given. It's very kind of plain. What if he mimicked John's speech? It would be a game changer for me. It would be improper, to say the least. Uh, I would skip this. Uh, it feels like we're kind of leaving reality. It's just, you're right. But what if, and Myers is not having it. Um, again, this is, I think Myers is a little arch here, taking too much enjoyment. I don't, again, I don't think a professor would say this to a student. So, so John is appealing to Myers and Myers just cuts him off, uh, not happening. Uh, John persists. Okay, but if there's anything I could do, I really need this. Okay, what I like about this is that now John is offering to do extra, and then Myers is going to take him up on his offer. It's not just John storming out, and then after acting like a jerk, having his professor turn around and say, actually, there is something you can do because if a student did this, I think he'd have a hard time walking that back. So let's take this out and let's make John feel a little more crushed. Let's punish him a little more. No answer. Uh, John sighs, heads for the exit. Now, we can do the offer. So I think we can get rid of hold on, John. Let's just have him start with it. You free Sunday? He'll be off screen when he says that. That's implied. So he can just say, well, first he'd whip around. John whips around. Um, yes. Let's say he's not, but he can be. I can be. Definitely. It would be early. Sure. Fine. John's willing to do anything. Uh, we'll drag it out a little bit more and go all day. Possibly all night, too. Uh, okay, hopefully this is kind of spiking our interest like what is he talking about what is the offer here john is game no problem and it will be enough for me to pass that's going to be implied this feels all very logistical i'll pass yes sign this okay i'll sign that here i wrote this down you know there, this dialogue is just explaining exactly what we're seeing so i actually i think we can cut all this the deal is going to be we can show that and not just state it. Point here is to get John on board with helping Myers in his secret project. Let's try and bring more interest along. Myers smiles to himself. A twinkle in his eye. Now John's curious what the hell's going on. So what's happening Sunday? And let's have Myers not tell him, but let's see. Well, how do I, maybe he's never had to explain this publicly before. It's a secret. Hmm. Words, words, words. And 
Maybe he laughs because he's embarrassed. You're gonna have to come and see for yourself. Okay, and then I think we can end the scene there. So let's look back at what we did. Interior Saints University, lecture room 104, day. Leaning against a desk with a close eye on his wristwatch is an older academic. He has a posture of someone who spent their entire career living inside their head with a bad haircut and a moth-eaten sweater to boot. This is Professor Myers, late 60s. Before him is a large lecture hall packed with students in the midst of an exam, heads down, scribbling, concentrated. Myers scans the room, notices a lone student seated in the back, staring off into infinity, looking hopeless. This is John, a knuckle-dragger with shaggy brown hair and a boyish face that does not match his hulking build. Myers watches John for a moment, then checks his watch. Time. The silence breaks as hundreds of pencils hit paper and students stand up, hand in their exam, and file out the door. Still seated, John lets the other students clear out before he reluctantly gets to his feet, mopes over to Meyer's desk, and tosses his exam onto the pile. I am fucked. Myers pulls John's test from the pile and begins flipping through it, scanning the pages. You studied? You know what? For once, I really did. Stupid. You left a lot of these blank, I know. Myers nods in solidarity. Hey, if there's some way I could walk out of here with a C, it would be a game changer for me. It would be improper, to say the least. You're right, but what if not happening? Okay, but if there's anything I could do, I really need this. No answer. John sighs, heads for the exit. You free Sunday? John whips around. Um, yes, I can be, definitely. It would be early. Sure, fine. And go all day, possibly all night too. No problem. Myers smiles to himself, a twinkle in his eye. What's happening Sunday? Well, how do I... Hmm, words, words, words. Myers laughs, embarrassed. You're going to have to come and see for yourself. Okay, what do we like about this revision? Hopefully, we start in a way where we can clearly picture what's happening. And we've also begun to demonstrate things silently, cinematically, without being told Myers is a poor student or told he's hopeless. Ideally, the audience is going to be able to put this together beforehand and then later have it confirmed, which is a great experience as an audience member. You suspect something and then you're rewarded for catching on. Hopefully the dialogue is less on the nose. So we're not just stating everything that we're seeing, but we're leaving a little room for backstory. And we're also not just covering logistics. Whereas in the original version, this last section was all about, here's the confidential paper. You need to sign it. I will sign it. Here's my address. You show up. Okay, I'll be there. What we've done here is created a little debate where Myers is testing John. Uh, you know, can you be here on Sunday early, all day, all night? And John is game. He's saying, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. And hopefully at the same time, we're making our audience lean forward and wonder, just like John is wondering, what is happening Sunday? What's nice about ending the scene this way is it leaves us wanting to see what comes next. So the experience is more active and less passive. Another thing we're avoiding is all the unnecessary details and logistics about the address, when you'll show up, etc. A lot of that stuff can just be assumed. If you show two characters debating about meeting up and then at a later time they've met up, it's easy to fill in the gap about them setting up the plans for that meeting. We don't need to hear them talk out all the details. So nice to skip that too. All right, well, thank you for watching episode one of Revising the Script. See you next time.